Sunning Cedar Lane. You may wonder why I started with a mask on today and I did it for one reason and that is, this is a special week. It's the week when I finally can pull off this mask and put on my Christmas mask. And my Christmas masks are really cool. And I'm glad that I get to accessorize in 2020 with a mask. But this is a special week as we celebrate Thanksgiving and as we work our way toward the first Sunday of Advent, which is next week. But today we're gonna to focus on gratefulness and gratitude. And so as we do that, I thank God for you. And I just pray that you're blessed as we worship together. Let's worship. As we come to the altar today, I want to give you a chance to, to express the ways that you're blessed. And you can do that at the beginning of the prayer. And then I'll, I'll start the prayer. And then during the prayer, I'll leave a space for you to be able to, to lift up those people and situations that you want God to hear from your heart. And then we'll continue the prayer and then finish up with the Lord's Prayer together. Let's pray. Lord God, we are indeed a blessed people. We come to you in a very strange year, but a year you understand. You have seen your people through famine, through disease and pandemic. You have seen your people through war. You have seen your people through genocide and so many other things. And God, as we pray this prayer today, we are just indeed thankful that you are seeing us through this too. God, in our hearts, we have many concerns. We have folks that we are, we are worried about. We have folks that struggle with COVID. We have folks that are having to work in the face of it. We are watching the numbers as they rise and we see the death toll going up and it, it really is scary. 
And we pray that you would not only calm our fear, but that you would work with us and give us wisdom into how we should act and how we should live out our lives and our faith in a way that protects not only us, but those around us. And God, as we pray this prayer today, we pray that you would continue to help us to be the church. We thank you so much that this week, 200 buckets of food will be in the hands of the students of Inskip Elementary School, and we were able to be a part of that. We're so thankful that today we can be a part of the fact that yesterday children came and got good, clean clothing through the kids' closet. We thank you, God, that today we prepare for the food pantry that will happen tomorrow. And God, in the middle of a pandemic, we are just so thankful that, that our focus is not on ourselves, but on others. Because God, it is so easy for us to get wrapped up in ourselves and our own problems, but it is so good when we serve and we have grateful hearts that give. And so God, help us to give, help us to serve, help us to live for you in all that we do. This is our prayer in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. I wake to a world with more questions than answers, where dissonant voices ignite division. My heart will stand firm in this decision. I choose thankful. Though I walk through a landscape that is uncharted and foreign, where the once familiar seems lost and forgotten, I will remember that nothing is unexpected to my Father in heaven, and I choose thankful. Though I live each day uncertain of tomorrow, I will accept that tomorrow was never certain and cherish every chance to witness the wonder of creation. I choose thankful. I choose faith in what is unseen, hope for a future beyond the adversity, love spoken despite animosity. I choose to believe. And though the struggles I face may be painful, 
though it sometimes seems impossible. Though I fall a thousand times covered in the dust of failure, I am able to rise. Not because I am strong, not because life is perfect, but because in all circumstances, Jesus lives. When this world stands perplexed and demands I give a reason for the hope that I have, I can only say that in Jesus' name, I choose thankful. It's not a simple choice. It's not an easy choice. But it is the only choice that brings calm in the storm. Not by my power, but through the strength of Christ alone. I choose thankful. This morning, I want to continue talking about gratitude, and I want to do that using the scripture that I used last week as our starter, and then I want to use another scripture also. So I want to talk from 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, the 18th verse, which we remember says, in the, in the midst of everything, be always giving thanks, for this is God's perfect plan for you in Christ Jesus. And in the midst of everything, be always giving thanks. That's God's plan for us. That's easier said than done, though, isn't it? You know, one of the things that I've learned through the years is that belonging to a church or claiming to be of a faith does not automatically cause us to be grateful. It does not automatically lead us into a life of gratitude. But what happens is when faith lives in us, by its very nature, it motivates us to gratitude and gratefulness. As God works in our lives, we become more and more grateful. We let go more of ourself than we do before that. Sometimes we, we kind of try to obey the rules and be good and all those things that happens when people are of a certain faith instead of being people who live and let faith live inside of them. And so today I just want to start off with talking about the, the struggles of life because, you know, a lot of us don't live from that faithful, grateful place. Uh, sometimes we live from that, that perspective of lack and we see not what we have and what we are. We see what we don't have and what others have. We live in a place where we tend to compare and we can't tend to complain about things. Are you like that? It can be that way. And I think we all have our moments that way. Sometimes we look at other people and see it's unfair that they have more than I have. Why do they have that and I don't? And look for ways to, to fill our lives with things and, and try to fill our lives with the things that fill whatever that is that's missing there. And I, I want to say this. I think that that thing that's missing there is, is that deep faith that makes us grateful. And there's something, something about that that is so true. Now, I just tell you this, that we all have that. I mean, let's face it. When we were two, right around that age anyway, we got a really cool toy and somebody went after it. And we took that toy and we just clenched it into our bosom. And we said, mine. And you know what? There's some people that just never grew out of that. They continue to clench things and hold them to their bosom because they, they have that, that sense of lack. What's going to happen if I let go of that? What's going to happen if I let go of that toy? What if I share that toy with somebody? They could take my toy instead of, I'm going to let them play with my toy and see how much they enjoy it and they're going to give it back to me because that's really the way it usually works when you're two years old and another two-year-old wants to play with your toy. They get tired of it and hand it back to you. But when, as long as we keep that, that clenchy, clingy spirit of lack in our lives, we miss it. And it's so easy in our lives to, to grab a hold of something and that, let that dominate us. And, you know, that happens in our lives. Sometimes we go through life looking for miracles and we miss the miracles all around us. 
Sometimes we, we look at and we pray for certain miracles and we forget and don't see there are miracles everywhere and there are miracles within us. You know, I think that's a hard thing for me to say because I never have felt much like a miracle. And I'm sure some of you feel that same way about me and about yourselves. But it is truly incredible what God did when he made me and when he made you. And if we lose sight of that and we judge on whatever other reason, we lose the power of the miracle that God did in us and that God continues to do through us and and to us. And so today I just want to, to kind of get that going in your mind. Think about the blessings that are around you. Think about how if you're not careful, you miss it. You go through life and you just miss it. I want to tell a story today about a, a group of people that nine tenths of them missed it. And that story comes from Luke the 17th chapter, the 11th through the 19th verses. And I'm gonna read from the new, new century version. While Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, he was going through the area between Samaria and Galilee. As he came into a small town, 10 men who had a skin, skin disease met him there and they did not come close to Jesus, but they called to him, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And when Jesus saw the men, he said, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as the 10 men were going, they were healed. And when one of them saw that he was healed, he went back to Jesus, praising God in a loud voice. He was grateful. He was full of gratitude. He had seen the miracle. And then he bowed down at Jesus' feet and he thanked him. And parenthetically, the scripture says, and this man was a Samaritan. And Jesus asked him, Jesus said, weren't 10 men healed? Where are the other nine? Is this Samaritan the only one who came back to thank God? Then Jesus said to him, stand up and go on your way. You were healed because you believed. Nine tenths of those men who had just experienced exactly what they asked of Jesus did not come back to him. And the one who did was the outsider, the Samaritan. So you get the feeling that maybe the other nine were the insiders who maybe thought they deserved it. I don't know. I'm really not sure, but I, I know that one of the things that happened there was the Samaritan noticed. He saw what God had done. He thanked Jesus for what he had done. And sometimes in our lives, we get so wrapped up in it that we miss what God has done. And so today, what I want to say to you is this. I'm thankful for you. When I started to count my blessings and I really started to think about Thanksgiving, the first thing I thought about was how thankful I am for you and how you have stuck with it through all of this, how you've continued to support the church, how you've continued to support me, how, how we, have, we have supported each other in ways that, that I didn't know we had in us, but boy, we do. And so I'm so thankful. I, I mean, I think through it and I think through how we have pulled together ways to get together and be as safe as we can be, how we have done all that stuff. But even beyond that, just the bond that we have, how God has brought us together and we are God's church right here in this place. And we are God's church where wherever we sit right at this moment, we are still God's church. Somehow we have stayed united even though I'm talking to a camera in an empty sanctuary but I'm talking right to you because guess what? You're on my heart. And the second thing that I'm thankful for is I'm thankful for the message of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for Paul. I'm thankful that, that Paul said to us that in everything, in the midst of everything, we're to give thanks. And you know what? This is everything, I think. What we've experienced in 2020 is pretty close to everything. There, there have been much worse times, don't, don't get me wrong. But I think that for our lives, this has been pretty close to everything. 
Uh, you know, we don't have the kitchen sink yet, but we have, hey, we still have a month. But even in that, I thank God for the message of Jesus Christ because it brings hope and peace and joy and love into everything. And so I thank God for that because it motivates us. And I thank God for, for this church. I thank God for uh, it, it living out the ministry of, living out the ministry of Jesus Christ. I, I thank God that, that we helped fill 200 buckets that will be given out to the Inskip students that need food. I thank God that kids got clothes at the clothes closet. I thank God that tomorrow people will get food boxes for Thanksgiving, given out with love. I thank God that we have not lost who we are in this, that maybe we've even gained a better grasp of who we are and we see the miracle that God is doing in us and through us. And I thank God lastly for technology because I never dreamed in my life that I would stand in a sanctuary and preach to my iPhone, that I would go to Zoom meetings to learn things and have meetings, that I would do things that are so far beyond anything that I ever comprehended. And even the pain and the struggle of all of that have allowed me to do things that I never could do otherwise. I can't imagine living back through those epidemics and things and pandemics back in the in the teens when there were no televisions and there were no phones and there was no way to really reach out and people lived farther away from each other and people were just dying everywhere because we didn't have the technology to save them. Thank God for technology. And so I just ask you today to open your hearts and I pray to God that you have a marvelous, thankful Thanksgiving. Let's pray. God, I pray right now for your blessing to be upon each one of us as we go back out to face the world help us to live in such a way to keep each other safe but to also keep each other thankful and god i just pray this prayer in the name of jesus christ amen